Hey, what's happening guys? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces and today I just wanted to tell you or work with you on how to mod your BIOS or flash your BIOS that you're getting an error. Now the specific error that I'm concerned about that I was getting before is subsystem ID mismatch. You can bypass this. I was waiting for a modded BIOS uh, from somebody to be released but a lot of people are able to flash their RX 5700 XT onto their non-XT model with no problems, not even getting this little subsystem ID mismatch error, but I was. So to show you how to bypass that, if you are interested in doing so, I'm going to show you how to do that. Now what's funny is this tech power up form or thread is related to the HD6950 and the H. D6970 but the mod still works the command line still works so let me go ahead and show you that first things first is you're gonna wanna run this kinda through command prompt so we're gonna have to load up you know CMD run as administrator and open up your command prompt then the commands that you're gonna wanna type in I will have in the description below but it it really depends on the name of the, the ROM that you're gonna be loading as well as the location so I would probably recommend putting it in the same location as your ATI flash tool so whatever folder you have it in make sure you put the BIOS that you want to mod or that you want to load in that same folder for mine it's RX 5700 XT I just went and downloaded the latest one um, from the Tech Power Up website which you can just go to downloads excuse me database VGA BIOS collection and then look for the one you want. Now there's a bunch of XTs in here, not XTs. My specific model I'm looking for the Challenger. So 5700 XT Challenger. We could also use the reference one but here's mine right here. So you would click on that or download. And downloads at the bottom if you do click on the actual name. And then download that. When you do it's gonna give a nice long string so you can hit show in folder and you're going to rename that, move that to wherever you want and just rename it, you know, XT BIOS or whatever you want. And you can just copy, cut whatever you want and make sure that you put that in the exact same folder as your ATI flash tool. So we're going to go ahead and paste that in here. And I'm not going to go and actually execute the command, but I'm going to run through it with you. So let's go through the commands first. All right, so let me read this to you real quick. If you scroll down the thread that I have linked right above the, the two updates, it says if you get an error like this, uh, you know, ID mismatch and you cannot erase the ROM, then you have to do some extra steps using DOS. You need to run the command prompt in administrator, of course, and run the program right here, ATI flash hyphen unlock ROM zero, but that's not the name of the program anymore. That's the old utility. So first we need to get there. We need to go to where we actually installed this particular program. Now you can extract it to your desktop, C drive, whatever you want. Either way, go to that folder, come up here towards the top of File Explorer, click in the address, local address location, and you're gonna have to type in command prompt CD for change directory, and then I'll hit like to hit you know control V, and now we're in that directory. Now we need to run the program. Now the program name is different than ATI Win Flash. The the folder is ATI Flash uh, two uh, two point nine three. I think that's the version. But the the program name or the EXE file is different. So it's AMD VB Flash Win. I just click on there to where I could copy the name. Hit Control V to paste. Dot EXE. Then you can either scroll down and copy what's in my description, or come here to the website and copy it hyphen unlock ROM space zero. Now when we do this, a little window should pop up. It may not pop up for me because I already did it, but there we go. ROM unlocked, so it did work. So okay, that's step one. Step two is gonna be relatively the same process. So we gotta go make sure that we have the program, cop, uh, the program name here. So AMD VB flash win dot exe and then the next steps is going to be dependent upon you and the name of your BIOS. The most important part is dash f dash p space zero 
space and then the name of your ROM, the name of your, your bio. So be mindful of that. Now in my case, as I said, I extracted it to the same folder. So here's the name of the ROM, rx5700xt.rom. Uh, I also showed you the other one, xtbios.rom. Either one would work because they're both the same ROM. I just made it shorter. So, you know, xtbios.rom. Now, if I hit enter on this, it's going to program that 5700 XT BIOS onto my non XT model. But your mileage may vary. This may not work on every card. So, before we do this, I want to make sure you are aware of the risk. If you do something like this and you system black screens, blue screens, won't boot, no display, no nothing, then you're in a bit of a predicament. And the only way to get out of it is to utilize another display. Now for Intel, like my 9900K, which has integrated graphics, on my motherboard, I can connect to one of those display outputs, boot into the system, and then flash the stock BIOS. You always wanna make sure you save the stock BIOS. If you don't know how to do that, you can just launch GPU-Z and go ahead and save it to a safe place first. So you just click on this little arrow, save BIOS, save the file. You don't need to save the online database because they already have it. They're more than likely already have your BIOS, but save that file somewhere safe. And if something goes wrong, you can always restore it. Now I already have it saved. Navi 10 original BIOS, boom. That's already saved in there. I'm good to go. So if I hit save again, BIOS has been saved. So if something happens to where this doesn't work and your screens won't load up or you're, you're, you got a black screen, no display output whatsoever, you're going to need to either, you either use a system that has two slots where you have two GPUs and you connect to the alternate GPU or a system that has an integrated um, graphics into the CPU where the display outputs in the back of the IO shield, uh, that would work as well. You just need to be able to boot into the system and run this program again to flash it back to the original BIOS. Either way, just be careful. Uh, if you have a 5700 with a dual BIOS switch, uh, you're, you're not in so much of concern because you can always flip the switch and, and be just fine. But just be mindful of that. Make sure you have a backup GPU or alternate GPU or alternate display output that you can utilize to flash your card back. So once you boot into the system, you're going to notice that uh, in your device manager, in your MSI afterburner, in everything, it's going to say AMD Radeon RX 5700 XT. So we now have applied the XT BIOS to our non-XT model. And as far as performance versus the soft power play table, because I did do a video and, and I was kind of comparing soft power play table versus a V BIOS mod, and it's going to be basically the same. Now, I did see ever so slightly within margin of error a decent performance bump compared to the soft power play table when I use the VBIOS. For example, um, we see here on this picture that Time Spy with the soft power play XT added was 82.30 and 85.12 for the overall score, whereas we got 85.89 on the overall and 83.26 on the graphics. And then for Fire Strike, we got 11.875 and 11.108, whereas we got 11.196 on the overall and 12.045 on the graphics. Now that's just one test. So again, it's within margin of error. But Hardware, uh, hardware Unbox Steve may have been right as far as stability. You're going to get more stable performance with the VBIOS mod than you would the soft power play tables. I didn't have any issues on either one. Fans are ramping up, by the way. And there, there's, I'll, do, I'll talk about it in the video. The, your manufacturer for your card may have released a BIOS uh, flash, like it's a quick you know, double-click, reboot the system, that improves your fan PWM uh, automatic tuning, so to speak. So your fan should perform better. That it basically an increase in RPM, uh, depending on the GPU temperatures. You may want to look into your manufacturers to see if they do have one on that page, and probably update that. But since I flashed a XT BIOS from the Challenger, I would have to do that to get the fans under control because they're just ramped up for no reason. Anyways, this is a great uh, 
chance for you to actually flash your VBiOS if you're getting the error subsystem ID mismatch. I hope this information in this video helped you out. If it did, hit the like button, subscribe for additional content coming your way, and I appreciate you guys stopping by and your time as well. As always, take care, and I'll catch you in the next one, guys.